and when he was born, something that he has refused to do so far. So no better place to go than the world's leading authority on this, and that is Philip J. Berg of Philadelphia, distinguished attorney, former Democratic Party candidate in the primaries for governor and senator, Democratic Party official, and a, a great friend. So welcome, Phil. Thank you, uh, Webster, and a happy holiday to you and every, all your listeners. <clears throat> I feel encouraged at this point, and uh, I'm going to ask all your listeners to, to help us out. There's two ways of approaching this. One, the legal way, and we're still doing that with three cases <clears throat> pending in the federal court system. We haven't given up there, and we're hoping that uh, that the, the, the Circuit Court of Appeals will do something, if not the U.S. Supreme Court, because we're asking them to enforce the U.S. Constitution. <clears throat> but we're picking up more and more support, and it's probably your listeners, so just to repeat it now, we need people to spread the word. I really think that if the courts are taking their time on this, we the people, um, and that's how the Constitution starts off, we the people can do something about this. We can force Obama out of office by forcing him to produce or, you know, remove himself. So please send everyone to our website, obamacrimes.com, O-B-A-M-A-C-R-I-M-E-S dot C-O-M. Um, and send it to everyone in your address book and ask all your friends, associates, neighbors to send it on to everyone they know. And we're going to start having more action on our website of what people can do. But we have to spread the word. We have to decide who to start phone calling to, who to start sending email letters to, and we're going to be putting that information up because I really think, think about it, when the American public really brings this to the attention of the president, again, 20 million approximate people know about this. If we raise it to 75 to 100 million people, um, then I think we can do something. We can have a march on Washington just to produce birth certificates. We can ask perhaps all of the people that come to Washington make a copy of their birth certificate. And we can take these birth certificates and perhaps and, you know, put them in a big box and then deliver them to the White House or, or put them on the fence around the White House. We'll think what to do. But we have to do something here. And the best, I'm going to go back to that letter from two months ago when the woman from Texas thanked me and she said, I'm a patriot and et cetera. And, I don't need compliments. I, this is now our 17th month doing this. But it is so important to remember what she said. She said, my nephew, 13-year-old nephew, I registered him for, him for school. And at the end of the registration, he said, principal, can I ask you a question? The principal said, sure. And the 13-year-old said, how come I had to show my birth certificate to register for school and Obama didn't have to show it to become president? And that says it all, ladies and gentlemen, and we have to really work together here. No one would spend over $1.6 million if he was a natural-born citizen. He's a liar. He's a phony. He's a fraud. This is the biggest hoax in our country. I don't mix words when I say about this. Remember Nixon and the Watergate. The Watergate break-in wasn't that great, but what got forced Nixon out of office was what? Was the cover-up. Well, now we have a massive cover-up. This is the 11th month since Obama's been in office. So now we're dealing with a, a cover-up by a president and people around him. Our case is the most significant case I have. I really think is the case pending in the Circuit Court of Appeals in Washington, D.C., the False Claims Act case. And the reason is that, for your listeners out there, you know the case I have in the Third Circuit Court of Appeals is the issue of standing. Well, on the issue of the Fourth, False Claims Act case, that case, that type case, has already been up to the U.S. Supreme Court. And the Supreme Court has determined that anyone brings an act under the False Claims Act, and that person would be called a relator, R-E-L-A-T-O-R, which I am in that case. But that person has standing. So in that case, I have standing. We just have to have the court to look at it. Now, there's a definite conflict of interest there by Eric Holder because he refuses to prosecute and investigate uh, his boss, the president, I hate to call him that, but the usurper, um, uh, Barack Hussein Obama, whose real name, probably legal name, is Barry Sotoro, his adopted name in Indonesia. Because if he hasn't legally changed his name, that's what it is. Now, the False Claims Act, what I'm stating is I don't believe that Obama is natural born, therefore can't be president, but I don't even think he's naturalized. I think he's an illegal alien. And if he's an illegal alien, it means he cannot, could not serve as a United States senator. Therefore, the money and benefits, salary benefits that he received, totaling about a million dollars, should be returned to the U.S. Treasury. That is, I think, the case that's going to break Obama. I think we're going to succeed on that. But more important, I would love it that if we can get the American public together on this issue, what greater issue at the time now, while you're sending around happy holidays, 
uh, Happy Hanukkah, Merry Christmas, uh, uh, Kwanzaa, whatever holiday it is, Happy New Year. Also include a message there. Visit the website of ObamaCrimes.com and send it to everyone you know. We want to demand the proof that is he constitutionally eligible to be president. And I don't believe he is. And he, like I said that when I first filed my first lawsuit back August 21st, 19, uh, 2008, 17 months ago, I said, if I'm wrong, I'll step away and apologize. Now, $1.6 million later, I'm not wrong. You know, he, no one does that. Also, as Obama is, I don't like to give him the issues, but as he's declining in the polls, we're getting more and more people who are starting to see the light and say, you know, Berg, you're right. Obama crimes is right. This guy's a phony. He's a fraud. You know, he's not, you got to give credit to that Republican, <clears throat> Arnold Schwarzenegger in California. People have talked to him about running for president, and what does he say? Amend the Constitution. What's Barack Obama say? Barack Obama basically saying, I don't care about the Constitution. I'm going to step all over that Constitution. I'm going to do what I want. It's time we, the people, stood up together and fought for what our forefathers did, uh, what the 1.6 million men and women who have died fighting for that Constitution, the 1.6 million additional people who have been wounded fighting to defend the Constitution. We have to stand together here, and we, the people, will succeed. And it's, it's such an honor to be on your show, Webster, and uh, getting this message out. So at the holiday time, when you're sending your holiday greetings by email, which doesn't cost you anything more than your monthly uh, cost, send out there to visit ObamaCrimes.com. Let's spread the word. Let's get people together. Let's force the issue. Let's force this guy out of office. Phil, I would like to, to propose also that you think about this uh, Answer Coalition-sponsored demonstration in Washington in March and the, uh, the advisability of having a, a large, vocal, visible uh, contingent of people who want to raise this birth certificate issue. In other words, if you have... Uh, if you have a clump of uh, 50 or 100 people with the right kinds of signs and the right kinds of banners, you can put that issue uh, on the map uh, in terms of such a demonstration, which I think is going to be fairly large. Right? We just had the December 12th demonstration. This was largely uh, traditional peace leaders. Right? You had Gravel, Kucinich, McKinney, Ralph Nader. Uh, the birth certificate issue uh, was, was not raised. Uh, but I think now as that, that movement comes back to life and revives and regroups, uh, there's certainly going to be a, a, a question, a legitimate question, about the constitutional viability of Obama. And there, there may indeed be other events now in January, February, where this could be brought forward. So I would urge you to think not, not just the, the need to get the birth certificate issue into the sort of Tea Party side of things, where, of course, it ought to be very prominent, but also now into this uh, revived anti-war movement and, uh, and begin to broaden that to include uh, a, a real approach to the Constitution. Uh, no, it sounds good. And listen, any place we will go, any place, any time, that's a great suggestion. I will go on any other radio show or any speaking engagement, any place to promote this issue, because there's nothing more important than this issue. This is the, we must enforce the U.S. Constitution. This is a disgrace. We're the laughing stock of the world. People around the world know he's a phony. They're just saying what they can get away with with him while he's in there. Good. I, maybe you want to put that up on your, on your site. When we get more information about, the, uh, about this, this demonstration in, in March, certainly, you may want to have a meeting point for people who are interested in the birth certificate issue so they can gather together, have signs get some rudimentary sound equipment, some banners, and, and off you go. You're going to get a lot of interest from the foreign press and so forth. So, happy holiday, Phil, and we'll see you next week. Okay, ObamaCrimes.com. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.